Hi, my name is Jay and in this video we are going to talk about the Persian invasion of ancient India which happened around 6th century BC. So the 6th century BC as a whole was an important period in ancient Indian history because it was the period during which in the eastern half of the Indian subcontinent the Mahajanpada of Magadh was consolidating its power and it was emerging as an empire. But in the north and particularly in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent we see that there was no such power like Magadh and most of the territory in the northwest was divided between small kingdoms and the two major kingdoms in this area was Kamboj and Gandhar and we find that all of these small kingdoms were first quite wealthy and they were continuously at war with each other. So the fact that these small kingdoms were quite wealthy and there was no sense of unity among them made them a tempting target for conquest. And it was during this period we find that in Persia the Achaemenid Empire was founded by Cyrus the Great or Kurush as he was called in Persia. Cyrus the Great when he ascended the Persian throne first made several conquests in the west. He conquered the Mesopotamian region and then he was able to conquer the Asia Minor region. Now after these conquests, his attention fell to the eastern boundary of his empire. There he saw that these small kingdoms in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent were quite rich and he thought that he could easily conquer these kingdoms. So he organized his expedition. So the first military expedition which was led by Cyrus failed miserably and we are told that around seven men only remained of this military expedition. But Cyrus the Great was not someone who could take military defeat very easily. So he decided to organize a second military expedition and this military expedition was somewhat successful. Although he could not able to conquer the whole northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent but he was able to conquer the Kabul Valley. The conquest of Kabul Valley brought the Persian Empire near to the Indian subcontinent. And it was Darius the Great who was the third ruler of the Achaemenid Empire who went on to conquer further territories in the Indian subcontinent. We are told that around 518 BC he was able to conquer the Gandhar region. So the Gandhar region was an important center of commerce and culture in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. Now after the conquest of Gandhar we are told that Darius was able to conquer the Hidus region. Now Hidus region most scholars believe was the Sindhu region and particularly the area which lay west of the Indus river. Now the conquest of this region meant that now the borders of the Persian empire was up to the deserts of Sindh and Rajasthan. In the north most scholars believe that the conquest of Persian empire was up to the Indus river but there are some scholars who argue that the Persian conquest was up to the Jhelum river. Now this view in my opinion is wrong because when Alexander invaded India and he crossed the Indus river we are told that no Persian satrap, satraps were the governors of Persian empire. So Alexander after after crossing Indus did not found any Persian sector. So that means the Persian Empire did not control the area east of the Indus River. Now that doesn't mean that in the east of Indus River there was no Persian influence. We find that in this region there were small kings who used Persian titles for themselves. So that means the conquest of Persia was not there but the influence of Persian culture was present in the area which was east of the Indus river. After Darius, Xerxes ascended the Achaemenid throne and Xerxes was famous for the military expedition which he had led against the Greeks and in this military expedition we are told that there was a contingent of Indian soldiers. Herodotus in his history talks about the Greco-Persian war and Herodotus tells us that in the army of Xerxes the Indian soldiers had small spears and they used bow which were made up of cannon. Now when it comes to the Indian territories that were conquered by the Achaemenid Empire, we are told that there were primarily two territories. The first was the Gandhar 
and second was described as Hindush region. Now Hindus, most scholars believe, was the Sindhu region. And these two regions are mentioned in an inscription which talks about Darius's empire. Now what is even more interesting is that on Xerxes' tomb, various soldiers who were part of the Persian empire is depicted. And here we find that there are two soldiers, one who belong to the Gandhar region and one who belong to the Hindush region. And here you can see that these were the two soldiers who came from the Indian territories of the Persian Empire. The Indian territories of the Persian Empire were the most wealthy territories of the Persian Empire. And we are told that these territories were also the most populous territories. Herodotus tells us that the tribute which was paid by the Indian territories to the Achaemenid Empire was proportionately larger than the rest of the empire. Herodotus also tells us that the tribute which was paid by the Indian territories was 360 talents of gold dust. Some scholars believe that this was around 9 tons of gold. The conquest of the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent by the Persian Empire had a great impact on this region. Because of this conquest, the Kharoshti script evolved. The Persian control over Northwest continued up to 330 BC when Darius III was defeated by Alexander. We are told that at the final battle at Gogomela, Darius III had a contingent of Indian soldiers and these Indian soldiers fought against the armies of Alexander. After the fall of the Achaemenid Empire, the northwestern region was again invaded by a foreign power. This time they were Greek under Alexander. Now in the ancient Indian text, these foreigners are described as Malichas. And if you want to know more about Malichas, consider watching this video. Thank you for watching.